Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, let's talk about folder groups in Studio One. Okay, here's a song I'm mixing, actually mixing this song as a part of a series of videos for Sphere members, Sphere exclusives we call them. If you're interested in seeing my process of mixing this song, you should join and check that out. Anyway, uh, here is a little background vocal in the song. It's done kind of vocoder style, super cool. Here's what it sounds like, but there's a problem. Can you hear it? Right now I've got some compression and EQ just on the overall background vocal bus, and there's one problem, see if you can pick it out. I don't always put the best foot in front of me. One more time. I don't always put the best foot in front of me. Problem for me is the last part of that, best foot in front of me, the singer did kind of that thing sometimes we do as singers where we sing the last line and we breathe out. And the problem is it gets accentuated by the compression. If there was no compression, it wouldn't be quite as loud and obvious, but it's right kind of in here where we're hearing it. It's not really doing anything for the song, it's just a little bit annoying. There's a couple of different ways to fix that. And the simplest would be, since it's only like, look, this is the entire song. These background vocals only happen once. So a, for me, the simplest solution would be just to edit out or fade out that last little bit. And the way I would do that is to come in here, hold down command to switch to the slice tool. So if you come up here, see how we have all these different tools? The split tool, excuse me. Well, if I just press the number one on my keyboard, you see how that little blue underline is moving around? This is a really handy way of that I've worked with Studio One for years. So my normal workflow is like this. So it's the arrow tool using making sure this is engaged that links the arrow and range tools. When I'm on the top side of, a, of an event, I can drag and select using the range tool. When I'm on the bottom side of event, I can select and move the entire event, right? So that's happening. But then when I press down command, I can switch to whatever tool I want it to be. That is the one that's underlined. So I almost, 99% of the time have it set up like this. So when I press command, when I hold down the command, it turns into the split tool, which allows me to say, I want to split this right here. Bam. See, I was able to split that without having to come switch the tools or anything else. I'm just, my thumbs already on command or be control on the PC. I can just go whop, bam, like that. Okay. So let's say here is the, here's the sound. Let's listen to just this one. Almost sounds like a snare drum. We can S select it, we can split it right here, select this region, pull the fader down, and maybe make it pretty aggressive, and see how that sounds. Probably better. The problem with this approach, you probably guessed it already, is I need to do this across all of them. Now I could do some sort of automation on the background vocal bus, but then if I do automation, I can't adjust the volume easily after the fact to adjust the overall levels. So what I would do in this scenario is instead of doing this on each individual track, I would just do it on all of them. And there's a really easy way to do that. So you've probably seen in other videos of mine, I'm a big fan of using folders. So as you can see, I've got all these different folders. There's one for drums, one for bass, one for electrics, one for keys, whoops, one for vocals, and then here's one that I've got for background vocals. In addition to it grouping my tracks together and allowing me to show and hide them, it also can route them to a bus. So I've connected this folder to this bus of the same name which makes it even more unique. But there's also this icon right here. You see that? That is a group tracks icon. If you're familiar with, I came from using Pro Tools for years, and Pro Tools has a really intricate, cool grouping system where you can have drums grouped, and then you press the letter D on your keyboard, and it groups the drums, then you press it again to ungroup them. Very cool workflow. I don't use groups as much almost at all now that I use Studio One because of things like this. I can just turn on the group for this bus by clicking that button, and now they're gonna all be grouped. I didn't have to create a group. I did, all I had to do was I already had the folder here. They're in it. I just grouped them, and then I click this button, and now they're grouped. So they're, they're not grouped before. They're in a folder, and then by clicking this button, I've created a group for everything inside that folder, which means anything I do to one of the tracks is gonna happen to all of the tracks. Can you see where I'm going with this? So if we do the same thing we did before, let's select it here, let's split it there, and let's do a pretty aggressive fade out. Now, look, we've done the same thing across five tracks instead of just one at a time. And now the whole thing should sound lovely. I don't always put the best in front of me. Now that little 
at the end is gone. And we can maybe massage this fade a little bit. One thing I'll do sometimes, if it's too much, I'll just make it shorter by doing something like this. I bring the edge in a little bit and we basically change kind of the overall shape of that. So it's we hear more of it, but it's shorter. Um, you can mess with that a little bit. But now you can see I very quickly fixed that problem across all of these tracks. And now I don't probably need them grouped anymore, so I just deselect it there, or Command-Shift-G will undo any active groups. And we're good to go, back to making music. This It's little things like this that we hope to show you here on the channel, um, because you add up... 20, 30, 40 of these little tricks over the course of a few years of learning how to work in Studio One, and suddenly you become fast, and you're able to make great sounding music quickly, and that's that's valuable, especially if you're wanting to work with other people. Um, to be able to do that in like the time it takes them to go grab a sip of their water and come back, that's really cool, and that really helps keep the flow going in the studio. So I don't care about speed for just the sake of speed, but I do like efficiency, because that means I can spend more of my time on the creative stuff, and less of my time on the technology and figuring out how to make it do the things I want it to do. All right, that's it for this video. Very simple tool, but hopefully one that you will utilize to great use in making great music. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.